So, <laughs> uh, now this is a uh, slightly factory defective um, silicon wafer. This is a silicon wafer lithography. Now you'll see uh, we've got uh, a few dozen sensors on the silicon wafer. By the way, this is the exact same way the image sensors are made for your medium format, crop sensor, micro four thirds. The largest sensor in the world is actually, I think it's using a 20 inch blank and it's used in a few telescopes. God knows how much it costs to produce, but it's like 11 inches by 11 inches. That's the largest uh, sensor out there. I think it's like 11 inches by 10 inches. It's almost perfectly square since every lens on Earth does not make like a FX image or a DX image. Every lens on Earth makes a circular image and that image is cropped. That's something else everybody else also forgets. This is why the really, really, really technical sensors are square basically because every, you know, every lens on Earth makes a circular image. It craps out the circular image at its rear. So here's the question. Since exposure is per unit area, not total area, and sensors do not work like solar panels, you know, larger solar panels, panels that gather more light and uh, more electricity. Yeah, that would be because there's only one output. Think about this for a second. There's only one output to a solar panel, and that is power. <laughs> but when it comes to an imaging sensor, there are a bazillion different outputs, and this is why we refer to megapixels. Bazillion dots of different colored light. Right? Right? Of course I'm right. And it's interesting enough, there's no light meter on Earth that has an input for sensor size. Yeah, so it doesn't matter where I hold this light meter, you get the same exposure. Because, like, if you're driving, like, from the big state of Pennsylvania into the small state of Rhode Island, guess what changes when you cross the border into Rhode Island? A much smaller state. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. Oh, wait, what happens? Nothing. If we were to believe a lot of the nonsense on some of these YouTube channels, guess which ones I'm talking about? Guess, guess which one? You would think that, like, when you drove, you know, on your uh, Cadillac, uh, your convertible Cadillac, and then, like, you crossed into Rhode Island, then whoop, less light would fall on your head or something. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. All of this stuff is... That is the sound of 99.999999 seven nines. Pure silicon. When you break these, by the way, they shatter just like glass and they like... Uh, they explode almost like uh, tempered glass and you like uh, get these stuck in your foot like little daggers that are in your carpet. <laughs> I've had that happen before. <laughs> yeah. All of your sensors are just like this, and then they're cut out, and then the wiring is attached, and then the substrate, and then the cover glass, and then you got a sensor. Yeah. Bigger sensors don't gather more light. Now, referring to the megapixels, which is better? I should have brought up my Nikon D3 or my Nikon D4. Now, those are full-frame sensor cameras. D3, 12 megapixels, Nikon D4, 16. Now, those are bigger sensors. Now, those should perform better. No, those are much older cameras. Even though they have large eyeballs on them, a camera is not a sensor, unlike a lot of YouTube photography channels. And you keep talking about sensors. No, a camera is an image processor. No, 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 no. They're inferior to uh, crop sensor Sony, Fuji X-T2. So, and image quality, as I've said, is a bubble that refers to over 30 different things. Image quality is just a big, obscure word that doesn't mean crap in and of itself. It refers to a lot of different things. It's like saying people. People. Well, that's, that's a general statement. Yeah, people are, people are this, people are that. It's like, well, you know, you need to be more specific. Hmm? Smart people are smart, dumb people are dumb. You know, big people can lift more weight. You know, saying image quality is a stupid statement. Everybody does it, though. It's got better image quality. It means taking the totality of all those things together and all things being equal, like same lens on a different camera, which produces the best image. But best, best image for who? And for what reason? Do you need a tight pixel pitch because you're cropping the hell out of your shots because you're a sports action wildlife or bird photographer? In that case, that's what's important to you. Not, uh, not uh, a full frame or medium format sensor, but pixel pitch and a native SNR on the sensor. All of these are sensors.
this was a rejected wafer. It's worth about 30 bucks. It's very beautiful, especially you do macro photography with it. Uh, why do people keep bringing this stuff up? Why? It's like, you know, these are the facts. Take your pictures. You know, my favorite images in the world, half of them are, are grainy old black and white shots. They're grainy. Bad image quality. But the image itself is wonderful. This is the logos, of course. I mean, there's the gear. Which is the techna, and then there's the then there's the I mean, excuse me, the then there's the art or the techna. There's the these the actual image, the physical image, as produced, measured, over and over and over again, and then there's the actual art itself. I mean, you see here to talk about just if people stop bringing this stuff up nonsense. People, are like, you know, so and so YouTube channel's got a billion subscribers, and they keep telling everybody that keeps watching that oh, bigger sensors perform better. No. No, 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 no. You're referring to, in that instance, a camera with A, a BSI sensor, and B, huge eyeballs on the sensor. That camera will perform better, but it has nothing to do with sensor size. As said, there are technical sensors that are really, really small that perform better than anything else out there, but they're like 2 and 4 megapixel sensors. But sensor size... Things that are unconnected to a sensor size, by the way, dynamic range, exposure. Dynamic range is per unit area also. I mean, it's like, how much dynamic range does that 4 megapixel, tiny sensor, small under micro four thirds, what is it? It's like, the dynamic range on that sensor is crotch melting. I forgot what it is. How many decibels of, uh, 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 well, that's in the low light before. I mean, absolutely off the charts incredible. Blows the hell out of everything, almost by a factor of two. Take the best digital sensor from uh, in the camera world, that little four megapixel sensor has far superior dynamic range. But it's a four megapixel sensor. Doesn't have much croppability. Then I mean, it'll see, it'll see in what we consider total darkness. So, you know, it's just nonsense. It's just nonsense. Why am I making a video like this? People say, why are you making that video? Everybody gets it. It's like, no, you get it, but everybody else doesn't get it. I'm not making the video for you who gets it. Why do people leave those comments to you? It's like, I get this. Why are you making this video? It's like, no, I didn't make this video for the people that got it. I <laughs> made it for the people that don't get it. Yeah. I really do need a parrot that says, bigger sensor, bigger sensor. <laughs> I need a parrot. Specifically like an African gray. Yeah, they're easy to teach. African grays are not nice birds, by the way. They're really, really, really smart, but they're also assholes. It's kind of like the me of birds. Very smart, but also an asshole. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, click the link below. Tell me, jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy, whatever tickles your pickle. Okay? Okay. Bye. <laughs>